Okay, welcome back, everyone. This is the Cube's extended hours. Things are starting to settle down. Dinner's starting being served. We're here with Prince Albert as an invitation for the VIP gala, part of Monaco leaning into crypto. We're reporting on it. Not our normal set, more of an after hours vibe. We're here with Iman Bashir, founder of Craftly.ai. Thanks for coming on the Cube. Thanks for having me. So I love your story. You're a coder, built, an, built some code, started a company. Now you're the CEO. You hired some people to, to wrap around, support you. Now you're running the show. What a great story. How did you get here? Give us the origination story. Basically, for as long as I can remember, I've been an entrepreneur. My parents have stories of me being too young to babysit, but I would create a babysitting agency and have sent babysitters out, or I would sell my lunches. <laughs> uh, throughout school, I would always find some kind of entrepreneurship endeavor. And when I came out of school, I kept finding myself lacking the necessary skills to really do a startup. And so that's when I discovered coding. And I took myself through coding boot camps and I started websites and I'm like, no, I want something more perpetual. I want to make money when I sleep. And then from there I found search engine optimization. So how to get to the top of Google. And I started working really quickly with like really big companies and immediately I realized my full budget spent on copywriting. And so that's when I discovered you could have that written by AI. Not going to replace you, but it's there to enhance you. And so built an AI copywriter. And so what does it do? Basically, you p type in a couple words. It could be anything, any use case. So product descriptions for e-commerce, blog articles for any company, really web copy, even does songs. Or your next breakup text, which <laughs> we'll get to that. But it does basically anything. You type in a couple words, and it generates text for you, all original and plagiarism free. Okay, can yeah. you write our blog post for us? Yeah. Say, hey, we're covering uh, the crypto conference in Monaco. Could even do a summary of this interview. Yeah. Well, we'll get that transcribed in the cloud. We'll get yeah, that in a second. Yeah. First, I love the story. Okay, so now you're the CEO. Great application. So imagine you're scraping pages, you're looking at summaries, doing any extraction, looking at word combinations. What were some of the tech behind it? We we use we leverage a bunch of different models. We use GPT-3, which was founded by Sam Altman, Elon Musk all major players that basically allows you to pull 175 billion parameters of data. Anything before it was two billion. So now you're talking, I'm able to pull like basically the whole internet. And from there, we added different models to provide learning and to get the best quality AI out there. There's a lot of bad quality. And so from there, we're able to take it, mix and match and have it formulate the best thing. So where are you now? So you're in your journey, the CEO, yeah. you have many people in your staff, what's the staff? So right now we have eight full-time people and a bunch of contractors. Before I was the lead developer, but now as the company's growing, I have to take a back seat and be more in a sales role versus being the one to develop it every single day. And so right now we're hiring more developers as we go. So our funding options must be off the must be off the charts, offers coming in left and right. So tons, but definitely we're in a different market environment than we were two months ago. So as you may have heard, crypto's down, possibly, but so we or were- a temporary basis, yeah. it's not truly down. But in the beginning, I wanted to hold as much equity as possible by bootstrapping, proving concept, doing it. I have a lot of the background and skill set to have it there. So I hired the best people. And once we proved concept, we were prepared to raise and then the market kind of slowed us down. So right now, luckily, our company is self-funded and supporting itself. Good. So we're making money and we're profitable. What you want to do, as yeah. long as possible. Yeah, and so right now we do, we are looking for growth options, funding options. We're talking to a lot of people. That's why I'm here in Monaco. Okay. But it's a good place to not be desperate. It's a good place to not need the money, but. You know, I always said when I was running companies and to my team, uh, my, uh, a friend gave me great advice. You can't go out of business when you have money in the bank. Yeah. So don't run out of money. Basically. <laughs> Luckily, our product, it, it's a subscription basis and it's a monthly, so we're making money immediately. All right, so I got to ask, what's yeah. the biggest challenge you've had and, and put in this, because it's a great, great story. Uh, you're really impressive, uh -huh. uh, great vision. You coded your own product. Now you you got you put the team around you. Yeah. What's been the challenge? How, how have you handled the the, uh, the the grind because it's, it's it's the joy in the grind can be fun yeah but then it gets complicated start adding people to the mix and you got to get milestones your self funding <laughs> and which by the way self funding is the hardest part yeah it is difficult yeah most people think like raising a big round is the the, the top of the mountain no 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 self funding is the a one <laughs> player that's so, an a play move a, a player move right there 
Definitely, I would say if I were to go back, I would get funded a lot earlier, especially with the market conditions eight months ago. Uh, but one of the biggest struggles I would, I feel I have faced was just being a younger founder. Sometimes you're, there's imposter syndrome in your within yourself, but otherwise, a lot of times people don't take you seriously immediately. Everyone always assumes that I'm someone's girlfriend at an event, or I, they say that's cute when talking about your business. And so you have to deal with that, yeah. Or one time I was at a conference and someone asked how I funded the company and I said I created ancillary revenue streams to be able to support it. And their response was, oh, I love it when my OnlyFans funds my business. And oh that, my God, that immediately. Is, that's un that's all, that is total. But now I use it as yeah, fire to yeah. ignite me and kind of prove everyone wrong. But I definitely would say that the journey, falling in love with the journey and realizing that no matter how big you get, Get, your problems only get bigger so it's choosing the right problems to solve and realizing that every day there's gonna be a fire just living in the moment well you're <laughs> such an inspiration to me and anyone I'm gonna oh. share your story because <laughs> what you just talked about a lot of people this being a startup, you eating glass you're falling on your face <laughs> you're tripping all the time hopefully oh. you don't get hurt but when people make comments like that to you given how uh, smart you are and how brilliant you oh, are how beautiful you, you are that is just unacceptable. And I think that is just a really weird thing. Like that's has to change. It's like, it's so unacceptable. I feel like the world's heading in the right direction and it's up to people to use those setbacks to ignite them and push them forward, which I'm trying to. You know, I, I, was, I read a book about trauma and how trauma defines you, right? Yeah. And trauma is little trauma, family trauma, and, and trauma is defined oh, as- perspective. Tra trauma is defined as not like, oh yeah, something died, or like little things could be like little traumas. Oh yeah, I was offended by my brother, or this happened there. So, so experiences define you. And I yeah. think one of the things that you just mentioned is you've made it stronger, you made you stronger. Yeah. The comments made you stronger. Oh, I definitely see even everything that I've been through. And this is the same for a lot of first time founders. All my previous companies, I've had the blessing of working with like an older mentor that had done it before. This was the first where I kind of was on my own. And when you do that now, if I look back on the last year and a half, I could probably do the same thing in a week. Once you do it the first time, you really do well, I'll learn. just tell you, you're brilliant, beautiful, you're very impressive. You. Teresa Carlson, who used to run all Amazon's web services business in the public yeah. sector, she's a renaissance woman. She's an amazing friend, great power. She so always up. she always says to me, and she's like, you know, my father was a basketball coach. I can handle with those men. And uh -huh. she would say, but she said it with proud, like leaning in like, hey, that's life. I'll take what life gives me. And I think that's a, that's a lesson we're seeing more of because you're seeing a lot more women in tech. I did 30 interviews in Europe um, the past March 7th, okay, um, in three weeks. Yeah. So a lot of stuff. Well, thanks for coming on. We got the event starting. I'll let you go. Thanks for sharing thanks your story. For having well, what's me. next it's for you? Delightful. What's next? Next is I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna build the word processor of the future and be the future of writing. Okay. Well, thank you for there coming. I appreciate it. All thank right. This you. is the Cube coverage here at the event. We'll be back with more after this break.